Hey everyone, I just would like to welcome you to our class here on Blackboard. This week we're going to be talking about arrowheads within design. I have already created a handout, as you can see here. This is the handout that I have available for you. If you'll just go to the assignments area and click on uh, the folder, I think it's called Arrowhead Exercise. Click on that and the first thing you see there in that list is this handout. You can click on that. It's a PDF format and you can print that out or you can just pull it up on your screen to follow along with me if you'd like to. Uh, I'm going to make this pretty short and simple. I just want to go over the three different types of arrowheads that I have listed here on this flyer and I don't want to waste a lot of your time so let's get started. The first one is a pen tool, working with the pen tool. Not sure how many of you are familiar with this. Uh, pen tools are usually used in vector programs such as uh, Illustrator. There is pen tools in Photoshop and also in InDesign. You can use a pen tool to create vector art. Vector art is um, based on mathematical equations so therefore you can take a very small object and blow it up such as uh, you could take something as small as a postage stamp and blow it up to fit on the side of an 18 wheeler and you wouldn't lose any quality with that so that's the really cool thing about vector. Bitmap works a little differently I'm sure most of you all have printed out an image from the internet at some time or another usually that comes in as very low quality it looks fine on your screen you go to print it out and it looks horrible it's all pixelated is what I like to call it blown out of proportion, distorted, grainy, whatever you, word you want to use for it it just doesn't look good so Vector Art has not got to the, the point yet to where it does photos well. However, they are working on that technology, and I do feel in the future it will get here. Just not yet, though. Okay, enough about the pen tool. Let's start using it. And you can find it here in your toolbar, or you can uh, just click on the letter P on your keyboard. Do that, and if you've used the pen tool very much, you know you have to click and drag to get curves. So... I'm dragging and then dragging and there we go and that's enough. Okay, I have me a nice little squiggly line here. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to pull up my stroke panel. If you don't see all the options that I'm seeing, just click on this uh, drop down menu right here. If I can go hide options. You might only be seeing the weight. You are, just click on that and go to show options and you'll get more features there. Okay, now I have this selected. I can change the weight. I can go from 10 points. I can go to 100 points. I could even type in, even though 100 is my top preset, I could type in 200. Now, I'm not going to be able to do much with that, so let's get it back down to something more reasonable. Just know that you could go way up in the stroke size if you wanted to. All right. I'm going to zoom in because I really want to show you how some of this stuff works. The miter limit is kind of weird. It is automatically set at four. And what that is, is that means that four times whatever the weight is, is what it will take for the miter to go from a join miter or a miter join to a bevel join. And you're not going to use that very often. I don't think I've ever had to change my miter limit. Maybe once when I was using a very large stroke, I had to change that. So if your stroke is not doing what you think it should do, you know, if it changes on you, if it starts looking funny, the corners or something starts looking funny, then you might want to mess with the miter limit. For the most part, you're not ever going to touch that. Okay, so let's look at things that you will touch. First of all, there's cap. Now, right now, we have a butt cap selected. All that means is, let me click off this, because if I click off, if I don't have it selected and I hover, you can see that blue line. That line is the line that I actually drew, and the black around it is the stroke that I added to it. As you'll notice, my line goes to the very end. That means it has a butt cap, okay? The line is butted to the end of the stroke, all right? I can do the round cap. Oh, I have to select it, do the round cap, and I get a nice little round. Okay. And notice how oh, how it just kind of um, 
go, it, it extends out the same amount of width of stroke as it is on each side. Select that again, and I'm going to go to Projected Cap. Now what this does is it gives me the same type of end as the butt cap does, except it extends out past that line. So it gives me a little bit more space. See how long it is there? If I switch on butt cap, notice it shortens. All it's doing is adding that stroke width to that. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is the join, and I'll show you that with a frame. Uh, let's go here and create us a frame. Let's put us a big, thick stroke on there of about 20, so we can see what's going on here. And we have our frame. It starts out with a miter join. Basically, that's just a nice corner, okay? It's a nice miter corner. Um, if you go round, of course, you're going to get round corners. And if you go to bevel, you're going to get bevel corners. All right, we delete that. We're going to go back to our pen tool and zoom out here a little bit. Okay, now, uh, align stroke. Um, actually, let me zoom back in here. <laughs> um, align stroke. There we go. Align stroke is um, fairly simple. It's based on the, that same little line that we were looking at here, the hover. Right now we're aligned center and um, we have equal amounts of the stroke on each side, okay? If we wanted to align the stroke to the inside, all that means is my line is right here. See, you can kind of see that blue line running there. And my stroke is all went to one side. Same thing with the outside. If I select that and click on the outside, hover over it, now my line is here and all the stroke is on the outside of it. No big deal, but if you're dealing with huge strokes, you might want to play around with that. Okay, now we're going to go to type and we can do thick thin, um, triple, dash, slants, uh, dots, wavy, diamonds, several different options. Not as many as what I think there should be, but you can customize. Um, I do kind of like the dash one there. Um, and let's look at the customize. How you would get to customize is you click on this drop down menu, go to stroke styles, and then you would just go to new. Okay? And here I'm going to add, uh, well, actually I have new, so I'm going to give it a name, and I'm just going to call this Cindy's Stroke Style. Okay. And uh, let's go with the dots. I like, I like the dots. Oops. There we go. All right, I have one dot in there right now. I've got a nice little preview down here that's going across through there at a nice distance. It's one pipe in between each one. And I'm gonna throw another one in there. Now you see how close those are? I might wanna move that on down. And there we go. Now, now I have a nice dot pattern that is pretty close. So I'm just gonna click okay. See how my dots are really close and I go okay. Now, if I select that again, I can go down and there is Cindy's stroke style. And it kind of looks like a rope. I could change that to color, change that to yellow, and zoom out here a little bit. And there's my nice little line. All right, now I want to add to that. I'm going to continue on in this stroke palette and then go back to it. And here's where the start is going to be the first anchor point that I put down with the pen tool. So I started over here on the left and I worked toward the right. So over here will be my start point. And you'll notice that when I click on a start, I'm going to do a circle, all right, it starts on the, the left there. Now I'm going to click on the end and do a triangle wide, okay? So now there is my nice little line with the arrowhead on there and the circle, solid circle for the starting point. I can change that if I want to. Um, I think you go to object and then paths and reverse path. There we go. And basically it just created a duplicate of that, I think, or maybe my view is just messed up. That could be possible too. Let me zoom out. Sometimes InDesign does that, yes. It will mess your view up and kind of give you a duplicate there, especially if you're really zoomed in. No big deal. Just change your zoom and you'll get rid of that. Okay? So it did reverse my path. So now this is my starting end and this is my ending. Okay. 
Um, I can also change the gap color in there. I can change that. There's very little gap color in this actual type because the dots are so close together, but notice if I use uh, the hash slant, then I have a nice gap color in there and I can change that. See, typically if I didn't have black in there, then it would just be clear. But I put black in there and I can also change the tint of that. Maybe I want gray and I can take that gap tint down, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it as black. All right. That covers the pen tool. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the text tool. Uh, using text with the glyphs palette. So I just create a text box. I go up here to type and I slide down to uh, glyphs. All right, glyphs panel can be expanded, which is really cool. And if you can't see very well, you can zoom in like that and see these symbols a lot faster or a lot bigger, sorry. And notice down here at the bottom, this is where you're going to see your fonts at. This works on all the fonts that you have available in InDesign. So any font that you want to use to see if it has certain symbols in it, you can just pull it up here, whichever font you want. And also the different font bases will, um, will have different symbols in them, such as regular and bold and italic, and maybe bold italic or uh, condensed, semi-bold italic. You see this uh, Mignon Pro, it has a lot of different font faces and I can go to medium metallic and see I would get all the fonts for that. Um, sometimes they have added ones in there if you go to that that are different than just the regular if you go to an italic or a bold. But a lot of times it's just the same ones too. I see a, some little arrows there and there's mainly the arrows. These are the hour arrows that I used on your handout notice right there those arrows okay now when I use that that put it up here in the recently used so that's a really cool thing I think there's like 13 or 14 slots up here that it keeps for you so if you uh, do use symbols a lot and maybe use the same ones like the copyright symbol or um, something a, a degree symbol or something along that nature then you're going to be able to find those really quick because they're going to be up in the recently used panel. And that's really cool. Now, let's look at what if I wanted a different arrowhead. Typically, you're going to find those in wingdings, webdings. Uh, on a Mac, we have zap dingbats. But uh, I know for a fact wingdings 30 has a lot of different arrows in there. As you can see, it is full of different arrows. So. If uh, you're wanting to do a lot of different arrows for your project this week, then I suggest going and using Wingdings 3. And the cool thing is about Wingdings 3 is it's available on a Mac and a PC both. Okay, so I can let me just click on one of these. Let's get this one. And I can just click on that. I can resize that, make that really big if I want to. This text is based on vector art. So, um, you can make it as big as you want to and you won't lose any quality. And I'll just change the color of that, make sure my text is there, and we'll just make a big pink U-turn there. All right, that's the glyphs panel. Now the last thing uh, that our handout shows us is just using a line. And you can access the line tool over here in the toolbar. You click on that. And one thing to remember about the line tool is that if you want a straight line or a 45 degree angle line, hold the shift key. And let go of that, comes in as one point automatically. Let's go back to my stroke panel. I'm going to change that to 10 so we can work with it nicely. It uh, has the rounded cap on there. Let's go ahead and change that to the projected cap. And I'm going to change the type to a thin, thick, or no, let's try a thin, thick, thin. I like that one. And this time we'll start with a square and we'll end with the barbed triangle or arrowhead, sorry. And I'm going to change the gap color to something light, maybe blue. And there we go. 